Okay, everyone, let's slow down a bit. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. I know there's a lot of new shiny stuff out there on the market right now, but can we please just take a second to have a think about what we're actually doing? Last week I released a video that was a little bit of a rant. I don't know what was going on, I had a lot of stresses with construction and stuff like that, and all I was doing was reading stuff about Hylion and Neo and all that sort of stuff. But I think this week I just want to be a bit clearer about what I was actually talking about. If you were to sit and watch YouTube all day, all you'd be hearing about is when the next crash is or what the new SPAC stock is or anything like that. Anything that will get you a little bit of minute by minute satisfaction. Today I want to slow it down a bit and make things a little bit more boring. If you take a look at my portfolio, you'll see that it heavily lacks many of those rocketing stocks. I have had a few comments recently that have very compelling arguments backed up by great numbers saying that they don't see things the way I do. And they've been making some serious money off things like Tesla and Neo and Nikola, all that lot. It shouldn't be news to anybody that these growth stocks are very much the outperformers right now. And if you take a look at the FANG stocks, you can see that it's been a very successful strategy for quite a while. These new growth stocks with the astronomical prices all have one thing in common. They're completely disconnected from their earnings growth. I understand it. People want to buy the likes of Tesla because of the story, because of how it's going to change the world. Elon Musk is selling that dream of world domination with electricity and automotion and batteries and even gene sequencing now. It is all very exciting to see that go up and I really think Tesla is going to be great for the world. But when does it end? This is a question I'm seeing regularly with Tesla investors. How long will this go on for? When's it gonna crash? Is Elon Musk gonna tweet something again? Tesla has amazing potential, no doubt. But all the euphoria and all the stress, that's way too much for me. I could sit here and I could tell you why I think that the EV market is in a 2000 style bubble. But I've come to the conclusion that while these market crash videos are great for views, they're a bit fear-mongering and they don't actually offer any value whatsoever. I'd like my videos to be a lot more about investing mindset than anything else, because all the books and the reading that I've done have all boiled down to people selling when emotional. You need to know the market's gonna go down sometime. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't own stocks. And it's good when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it goes to six, that's great. I made money in Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I can understand it. I, uh, when there was recessions, I didn't have to worry about what was happening. I could go there and people were still there. I didn't have to worry about low-priced Korean imports. I mean, I just didn't have, you know, I can understand it. And you laugh, I made 10 or 15 times my money in Dunkin' Donuts. I'm happy to take a look at fundamentals of my companies every so often because that's important. But to be honest, great businesses aren't really that hard to find. You only really need to know the basics of supply and demand, and half the work is done. What's much more important for me is being able to detach myself from the feelings of wanting to buy Tesla because it's doing so well. And then I don't want the emotions of if I did buy Tesla, that I've sold out too early and now I'm watching everyone else make money because I got a little bit scared. And then I also don't want to figure out if I've bought into Tesla too high and then it collapses around me. So today I wanted to help develop a couple of tools that might help you block out some of the noise. And this doesn't just work with say the dividend investment strategy, it will also work if you decided to buy into Tesla. First of all, you need to understand that astronomical rises in price like Tesla and Neo happen all the time. As much as people want to believe it, Tesla isn't anything new. You can take a look at Coca-Cola in 1998, or you can go back to the year 2000 and see the dot-com bubble. You'll see that the Tesla story isn't actually unique. Shit like this has been happening for a long time. Disruptors come into the market, they make a lot of money, and then they fall back into line. Either the market catches up to them, or they come crashing down back into it. 
And if history repeats itself so much, then there's no real reason for me to listen to what's going on right now. Because it's very hard to make a well thought out decision when you've got a million voices talking in your head. I've always considered that a good way to block out all the noise is by setting a good goal and then having a good plan. I apply this to many things in my life. Not everything though. Now when I'm talking about setting a goal with investing, I don't necessarily mean that you need to pick a number. I'm personally not going to sit there and say I want to be a millionaire by this date. I feel like that's a bit specific. I don't know exactly what money is going to be worth in 10 to 20 years. We could all be using Trump coin by then. I'm also not going to be able to predict the returns on my investments. Many people do believe that they can predict returns on this and that stock based on their book value or their earnings projections. And many others willfully accept that the S&P 500 will generate 8% growth year on year. But none of this is guaranteed and it's totally out of your control. And if you base your decisions on things that are totally out of control, you're going to generate bad mental health. So I have to look towards things that I can control. And I think what I can control are my investment deposits and my exposure to risk. So first of all, I can set myself a cost averaging goal. I want to be able to deposit a certain amount of money that's realistic to my earnings and my expenditure. You can do this by using a compounding calculator. This one here is a popular one. I'll link this one in the description below. But the way I use this calculator isn't the same way a financial freedom would. For a start, I'm not gonna sit it at 8% or 10% or 12% of gains. I'm gonna put my yearly interest down to about 4%, just to be nice and conservative. And then realistically, I think I can max out my ISA in one year. And that's going to be roughly 1,666 pound a month. Now that is kind of high for me. I'm gonna to have to work really hard to do that, but it's not totally unrealistic. And if you have a look at that calculator, it says that within 10 years, I can have about 200 grand. That's pretty good. And then as a dividend investor, I could go one step further. I could hypothetically put all that money into realty income. And with 200,000, I'm actually gonna generate quite a good monthly wage for doing nothing. If the market does stay at 8%, or for whatever reason, I actually beat the market, that'll be a bonus and I'll just earn more money in the future. But please do be careful with these compounding calculators. A lot of the financial freedom people put ridiculous returns on it and also make you put in ridiculous deposits. It's very easy to play around with them and give yourself pretty unrealistic returns. I'd especially avoid the one on Trading212 because the valuations on there seem just ridiculous. I'm hoping that's in there for a bit of fun, more than anything serious. But the most important part of my goal is to set up my investment portfolio as a savings account. It's very important to understand that the idea of compounding wealth is very much down to how much you're putting in. The majority of my growth is mainly going to be down to the amount of money that I'm continuously reinvesting. And my rate of growth return is actually likely to be very low because I'm investing in blue chip companies that have very low risk. But second of all, as part of my plan, I'm trying to generate some form of passive income through dividends. Passive income is just money that I'm earning for not doing anything. And then I want to use that passive income to reinvest into my portfolio and make it grow a little bit faster. That's why I chose the dividend growth strategy. Every month I plan on earning money from these companies that grow their dividends every year. These companies are paying me these dividends in exchange for access to my savings account. And that's all I have to do to earn this money. I literally have to do nothing and this money just flows into my account. It's not like growth where I have to make a decision to sell off to get some money. The money's just paid to me. And I personally see that as a benefit. So when I'm paid these dividends, I can reallocate them into the rest of my portfolio. So for example, with the 30 pounds worth of dividends that I earned last month, I can buy six shares of BAE Systems. I feel like BAE is heavily undervalued right now, and I'm willing to buy more shares, even though its share price is a little bit low. I'm pretty convinced that BAE's share price is pretty low right now because it's cut its dividend. As soon as it reinstates that dividend, the share price will probably shoot back up. 
and because I've reinvested my dividends at that lower price, I'm going to get a better deal. In my opinion, that's a really safe and reliable strategy. So that's my plan. As far as the end goes, I'm not really sure yet. I haven't really thought about it that much. It's probably something I'm going to have to discuss in a future video. But really, the end, I don't know, probably just death. I don't know, I'm still not fully convinced on that financial freedom thing. It still seems a bit unattainable. But certainly the end goal of all this is probably just to make my life easier by having my money earn money. And if you believe in growth, you can apply that same strategy to growth. A goal and a plan are something to keep you focused on the future and not the now. But what I think I can agree on with most investors is that selling is not part of the strategy. If I'm selling a company, it's because they've done something awful or something has changed in them or I missed something when I was starting out. I can tell you now for sure that selling a company will not be solely down to their market price dropping. That will pretty much be the last thing that I will consider. Market price means very little to me in the long run. I'll even buy companies that are a little bit overvalued. My plan is about picking the safest and lowest risk companies right from the start. And these companies should have the best chance of growing with the market, even though they might not have the best chance of dominating the world. I just need to know their business model well enough to know that they'll stay for the future and also that they're continuing to grow revenues. Speaking of goals and plans, I had this very interesting email from Matt. He's asked me to review his portfolio. I don't know why you'd want this idiot to review your portfolio, but let's give it a go anyway. Even Paul, this has kind of a story behind it. I started investing in December. I used mainly free shares and started to invest around £20 a month until May. After time, having a small amount in Tesla, my money grew and grew. But when COVID struck, I thought this was an opportunity to cash in on low stock prices. So I cashed in on Tesla and spread out my earnings across a few banks, Cineworld, etc. At this point, I upped my investment to £100 a month and my sister-in-law now invests as well. He states that his banks and Netflix are his long-term stocks and Amazon and Tesla are his day trading stocks. He says that he'll happily take out £100 out of Tesla or Amazon if the market's volatile, if something crazy's happening. And he's saying that he's had good success in Wirecard and Novavax and Lemonade. And that's just been in the past two weeks. And then he puts it all back into Tesla and Amazon. And then he lists a watch list of what he goes to if he's worried or if he's making losses. And then he says his initial investment is about £600 and he's made it up to around £900 now. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you need any more shots. Matt. So I had a quick look at Matt's watch list. It's pretty much the same as everybody else's would be. Uh, loads of YouTube hype stocks and everything like that. Not a problem, just kind of what you'd expect from a new investor. Now at this point you have to remember, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not giving advice here. This is my commentary on this portfolio from the position of myself as a long-term and dividend investor. So if we look at Matt's portfolio right now, the big winners are Amazon, Tesla and Netflix. Exactly what you would expect. The rest of his stocks I'd largely consider to be value traps. It's pretty much impossible to predict how UK banks will go right now. Lloyds and HSBC are two companies that haven't recovered from the 2008 crash yet. Just think about that. It's been 12 years and they still haven't recovered back to previous highs. And there's no reason to think that negative interest rates are going to help them get back there. And then you've got to look at Cineworld. Even if it is open, social distancing rules are gonna kill their revenues. And even if it does return to normality, it's had to take out lots of large loans, even one last week to help it recover. These loans have been taken out at ridiculous interest rates, and that's gonna really hurt revenues in the future. So to me, it feels like Matt has bought these companies just because their market price is low, which isn't the best reason to buy a company. And I've got to be honest with you here, I have to be, but this portfolio is nothing like what I would do. I'm not saying that you should invest like me because I don't know if my way is the best way. But I can tell you for sure that this portfolio is the exact opposite of the message of this channel. Myself and Matt obviously don't agree on a lot. He's not into dividend investment. 
He's much more into growth, and that's fine. He says he's ready for long term, but at the moment he's trading Amazon and Tesla. So we have to focus on a couple of things in Matt's portfolio. Matt's doing very well, all things considered. He says he started investing in December and he's grown his 600 pounds into 900 pounds. That's 33% growth. That's pretty fucking good. He's been trading volatility and he's had a lot of success. But I don't understand why Matt has been trading Amazon and Tesla and going long on real big value traps. Matt says that his initial deposit is 600. Now I don't know if that was in December or if that was in May, but if Matt had just invested 600 in Tesla, either in December or May, he would now have about 1,500. I can imagine that Amazon wouldn't have been that far off either. He'd be well on the way to that car deposit and maybe even paying off his mortgage. And he wouldn't have had to sit there back and forth day trading it, he'd just put it in and sit there and it would make money. It tells me that there isn't that much research going into Matt's portfolio and also that it's very much guided by emotion. He's buying in and pulling out based on how the market's gonna work. I can't even agree on Matt's ethos. Matt's saving up for a car, but he's saving up for this car in investments. That doesn't make sense because you don't know when you're gonna be up or down and your long-term investments, Matt, they're pretty much down right now and they could be down there for years. So unless you're going to wait for that car for 10 years, I don't know where you're going to get that money. If I was looking to buy a car, I'd be putting that money in a totally different account, well away from risky investments, because that's something that I need. And with investments, I'm only going to be using money that I don't need for a very, 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 very long time. There is the possibility that I may never sell my investments. Think about that. I could be 70 or 80, and I'll still be hanging on to thousands and thousands of pounds worth of money in fucking 3M. I suppose it'll be called 4M by then. But Matt could have just done his research, got confident in Amazon and Tesla, and then bought them forever. And he'd have way more money. Instead, I imagine that he's watching YouTube videos on hype stocks and buying in and out of those all the time. I personally do not have any problem with someone buying Tesla if they really believe in it. And I mean they've researched it properly, not just watched a couple of YouTube videos on it. Chicken Genius is very convincing. He's very, very good. I'm sure what he says is true. Just have a think yourself. But if you've truly worked out exactly how much money that Tesla is going to be making in the future, and you think the market price matches that, then go ahead. I think you're gonna win. I mean, if you wanted to know my opinion, I think it's a big massive bubble that's ready to burst but that shouldn't matter to you at all. Tesla is simply way outside of my risk strategy and that's okay. I can't get involved. But surely, even if you're a growth investor holding onto Tesla, you've got to agree that buy and hold is absolutely the best strategy, along with cost averaging, not banging on your phone all the time trying to trade IPOs, because that's just a time consuming strategy. I'm really sorry, Matt. I've got to be honest with you. I wouldn't touch your portfolio with a barge pole. Thanks very much for watching, guys. The app that I use to invest is Trading212. If you wanted to get into investing, there is a link in the description below where you can sign up. If you click that link, sign up and make a deposit, you get a free share. And today, Matt gets a free share as well for being such a good sport. By the way, if you do have a question that you would like me to answer on here, send me an email. I'll see if I can answer it. Also, if you want me to review your portfolio, I'll be honest about it. Thanks very much for watching guys. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe and invest.